Welcome! In this episode we'll be painting a more dynamic sketch, sort of like an encounter scenario. And as usual, stay tuned, because we'll start with a very simple line work sketch and end up with a final image. Along the way, I'll also try and break down the main steps. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for filming games, and I really hope you guys will enjoy this video and find it helpful. Alright, let's start! Okay, so the first thing I was trying to figure out is the placement of our characters, right? The human character on the left and the big snake on the right. And I guess in this type of scenario, the best thing would be not to place them at the same level horizontally, because that would mean that they're kind of like having the same importance. And in order to create this situation of tension, sort of like an imminent danger, uh, you want the human character to be smaller and placed lower, horizontally on a, on a lower level in this case it would seem like it's more fragile and the snake is even bigger and also i was thinking that a nice diagonal composition would work best in this situation we have this line created by the eyesight of the snake like looking straight at our character and uh, some elements like for example the sword that the character is holding in his hands uh, pointing also exactly at the eyes of the snake so this in return gives us a very strong diagonal line happening right in the middle of the scene. And another thing I was going to mention is that I personally prefer imagery that is portraying something moments before it's going to happen. Like for example, this anticipation moment when the snake is about to strike and you know, other scenarios like this. For me personally, it's more interesting to imagine what would actually happen by myself. And I think for you know some of the audience as well. And I also heard some other artists say the same thing. And it's you know really something to think about it. Uh, I was going to ask you as well, like, what do you guys like? Do you, do you prefer imagery that is showing you exactly what's happening in the moment? Like, for example, launching or hitting something or exploding exactly, you know, as it as if as it happens. Or do you guys like to imagine stuff by yourselves and you know, seeing things happen just a few moments before uh, the actual you know essence of the action? Anyway, uh, we're already blocking in the whole scene with flat color. Like as I usually do, I'm figuring out the mode first. And in order to do that, you can start with the background, the color of the sky. You can use your references, anything that inspires you, figure out the local color of all the objects or your main elements, the planes, break down everything into values. Uh, think about your composition, right? In the beginning, you, you've started with a composition idea and now when you have the values ready, uh, more or less, they might not be finished, you will push them around, but still for now, once you have them ready, look at the black and white image, for example, analyze how your values are grouped, how do they work together, and that all helps, you know, achieve a better image in the end. In this type of scenarios, it's really good if you're doing a bit of research before you're committing to the final project or image or whatever. For example, you can grab a couple of images of snakes in this case and do just very quick sketches, like maybe five minutes, pencil on paper, doesn't really matter, just for you to understand the subject matter a little bit better and in return this will definitely give you a better understand understanding of things a better image in the end as well now once i'm done with blocking with flat color you know so far the image itself it's quite flat unless you're looking at the snake i've actually pushed the values quite a bit early on uh, just to see how it reads and um, you can think about the form a little bit right um, you have a scenario where the sun is placed um, on the top of our characters right now so the direct light is gonna hit the snake um, the character a bit and you have to think about the shapes of the shadows that are gonna be created um, so that's like the main thing right now trying to understand the form break down the planes and apply the correct values and colors And by the way, don't forget there's a free brush pack in the description. And for those of you that want to improve even faster, I upload monthly full video tutorials on Patreon, as well as some exclusive tutorials, also more brushes and original PSD work files. So don't forget to check that out. Let's move on with our image and try to shape it a little bit better by adding some details, working on the forms, describing planes a little bit better. And 
for example, with the snake, for, with the scales, I kind of went with an old-fashioned method and I just painted them manually one by one. Uh, it's up to you, you could use maybe some textural information, maybe you can create your own brush and sort of like glaze over the shape and create scales. Um, you could try, you know, there's lots of ways you can add this type of information. At the same time, uh, try to think about variation and not only repetition, right? So for example, break down some of the scales, change the values. For example, you can see me adding some color variations and that really helps to enrich the image a little bit, create some visual interest for the viewer to notice. Break down those simple lines that repeat themselves with some interesting details. Since the sun is shining right on top, we can create this nice little shadow that will indicate that the head of the snake is already across a across its body right so it's even closer to the character than we think and uh, this is sort of indicated by this shadow shape and also i was thinking since the snake is quite big uh, it just lifted its, it was laying down on the sand you can see some particles of sand falling down its head um, this will also kind of show that it's in some sort of movement a little bit of details here and there to help the viewer understand the whole thing now let's look at the character and the way I basically painted it is pretty much the same process as I follow when I'm describing environments. I'm thinking about the shapes that are created by the shadows. In some cases, for example, in this strong type of lighting, you definitely want to unify the shadows a little bit. Think about the clarity first. Uh, it's very easy to get into the process and think that, you know, like the more details you'll pack, the, the better the image, but usually uh, the more information you add, oftentimes uh, the image, you know, the worse the image becomes because it's it really has it has to be done gradually and carefully. Otherwise, you might mess your initial impact from the composition. You can especially see this uh, in the legs area of the character that the shapes are quite graphic, not very realistic, but that was done deliberately so just to improve the clarity. I'm going to spend a little bit more time also describing the materials, gloves, the sword, um, the enforced leather or whatever his suit is made of. As also I was thinking that it should be kind of like light since it's a desert environment and probably want to keep this uh, whole thing a bit more mobile. After the character, most of the time I'll have a general look at the whole image. Uh, check the values, check the edges, uh, make sure everything is readable, make sure that I kept the initial impact from the composition uh, up until now as well.
Thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps a lot. Also, big thanks to those of you that subscribe to the Patreon page. And as usual, don't forget to ask any questions you have in the comment section. I'm trying to answer as many as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Coming soon.